Hey everyone, it's Adam. In today's video, we're going to go over how you can reprogram the buttons on your ATEM Mini, ATEM Mini Extreme, or ATEM SDI line of switchers. Now, let me give you some background. When I first got my ATEM Mini Pro back in the year 2020, I really loved the device, but man, I wanted a way to turn on the downstream keyer on and off from the physical switcher itself. Now, you couldn't do this because there is no downstream keyer button on and off on the ATEM Mini Pro. You had to do it from ATEM Software Control. And this was the very reason why I developed Mix Effect in the first place. So Mix Effect started out as a simple turn on the downstream keyer, turn off the downstream keyer button. And as we all know, it became a, uh, it grew and grew to become the kind of powerful control software for Blackmagic ATEM switchers it is today. But now I want to show you this really cool thing. So I'm going to go switch over to my iPhone. And I'm going to turn on this upstream keyer right here. So you can see my ATEM Mini Pro right here, and you can see Mix Effect that's running on an ancient iPad Mini 4 um, connected to Ethernet for a very strong connection. And we have all these buttons here, which I'm sure you've probably never used before. So there's the picture in picture buttons, there's the changing the, the transition rate for your transitions, there's the pattern transitions, there's the DVE transitions, and there's the mix and the dip. So normally, uh, at least I rarely use those buttons. So watch what happens. I'm going to push this button here and you see in the bottom right corner in my upstream here, what happens? It just did an auto transition. Let's do that again with this button. Wow. Look at that. And let's push this button here. This turns on the downstream keyer that you can see in the picture in picture. And I'm going to switch to the next image. There's that little circle in the upper right. I'm going to push this one, go back to this one, push this again. I'm going to turn off the downstream keyer. Okay. And then I'm going to actually push these buttons here and see what happens here. So push this bottom left one. Oh, it performed an auto transition. I'm going to push this one again. It also performed an auto transition, but through the power of programming, you can make those buttons do whatever you want. So how is this possible? Let's take a look. All right. Again, here I am on the upper left. There's my program view from my consolation. At the bottom, there is the, um, the view here. And in the upper right, there is companion. So this solution is going to involve bit focus companion, Mix Effect and your A10 Mini Pro. So let's go switch over to the Mac. All right. So what we have here is in Companion 3.2, which is the latest version of Companion, you can add triggers to your uh, to your BitFocus Companion. Now, normally, you know, if you have a Stream Deck, you probably program your downstream keyer buttons, your previous next still buttons, and do all those buttons on your on your 1532. Um, button stream deck. But if you don't have a stream deck and you have companion, you can still take advantage of these buttons on your ATEM. So again, let's take a look. Where is my mouse here? My mouse is hiding. Okay, there it is. Okay. So what we're doing here is we are creating these triggers that's in companion 3.2 again, and we are listening to certain conditions becoming true. When those conditions become true, we execute an action. So let's take an example of the simple one here. I did the transition pattern horizontal. Okay. Well, actually let's take a look at the DSK. So we have this one transition DVE push, right? DSK on. So we're looking here at the event. The event says uh, when this condition becomes true, this condition here, do these actions. So. When you press the physical button on the ATEM Mini Pro to do the push right uh, transition, that's what this is checking on. So when this transition becomes active, you want to do this. So we're going to set the DVE style transition to push top left, which is not push right. Then we're going to set the transition style back to mix, okay, from the DVE transition back to the mix transition. And then we're going to say DSK on air. Now, the reason why we want to do this is because we want to reset the transition style from push right to push top left, because if it sets it to push right and you don't do anything else, 
and you push that button again, nothing's going to happen because it's the condition has not changed. It's, it's still true. Okay. When it becomes true. So since it's still true, this transition will never happen. You push the button, nothing happens. So what we have to do again is change the DV style transition to push top left. Then we set it back to mix, which is our default transition. Now with this solution, you either use a mix or a dip. Um, and that's what you get, but you can, change this to, to however you want to do it. If you always do DV transitions, you can use the mix and dip button to do perform your action. <clears throat> and finally, the most important thing is we turn on the DSK on air. So again, I'm going to go switch over to the iPhone. So you can take a look at this and I'm going to physically push this button here. And actually, oh, I pushed the wrong button. I pushed this button here. And that turns on the DSK and this one turns it off. Okay. So coming back to the Mac, we see this again, um, DSK push, right. It turns it on and then D DVE squeeze, right. We look for the condition squeeze, right. To turn on, we turn the DV style to squeeze top left, change the transition style back to mix. And then we turn the DSK off. <clears throat> now, I showed you previously the, how to select the previous and next still. So this is the same thing. In this case, we're listening to the transition wipe pattern left to right being set. And in terms of the actions, we're going to go backwards in the media player. So select the previous still. We're going to set the wipe pattern to horizontal barn door, which is not the one that we're triggering on. And we're going to set the transition style back to mix. And for the next still, we're listening to the top to bottom bar, which is what the physical button does. We're going to the next still. We're setting the white pattern to horizontal barn door. So it's not this one. And we're setting the transition style back to mix. Now you can see for these other ones, I'm just doing auto transitions. So in the title bar, I just say kind of what it's doing. So the mix rate 0 0.5, 1.0, 1.5, 2.0. If the dip rate changes to 0 0.5, 1.0, 1.5, 2.0, just perform an auto transition. And the way that works is that when you push the physical button and it changes the mix rate to 15, what we're going to do is we're going to set the mix rate to 31. So this is going to be one second and one frame. Okay. So it's not, so you can still push the 1.0 button to perform some action, but this one is setting it to 31 frames. And then we're just going to perform an auto transition. And you know, you can delete this and then do whatever you want with the actions. So you can run a macro, you can do a super source preset. If you're running on an ATEM mini extreme or an ATEM SDI extreme, uh, you can do whatever you want. Uh, it allows you to basically reprogram certain buttons on the ATEM mini pro ATEM mini extreme and ATEM SDI to do what you want. Now we take a look at those, uh, picture and picture buttons. So there's four of them. On the A10 Mini Pro, there's one that sets the DVE to the top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. So what I'm doing here is I'm checking for three conditions. So I'm checking for the condition of the DVE position X, Y, and the size. And when you push that button on the physical A10 Mini Pro, it sets it to, for the top left, negative 12.5, 7, and 0 0.2. So when the DVE gets set to the exact position, Bit Focus Companion knows that runs the trigger and then performs the action. So what I'm doing here is I'm just resetting the size to 0 0.21. So slightly bigger, but it's not one of these. So it, it unsets it on the A10 mini pro, the little light on the button. And then I perform my action, which again, it's just an auto transition just so you can see that something is happening. And we do the same things for DV top, right, bottom left and bottom right. Now on the A10 mini extreme, and ATEM SCI extreme, there's a few additional buttons. There's one where there's picture in picture, like side by side. And then there's another one. I think I have my ATEM right here. So there's the side by side. And then there's one where the picture's all the way to the left. Now, if we switch back over to the iPhone view, we can see all these buttons. We have one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Plus we have the dip rate. So if you set this to dip, we also have 13, 14, 15, 16. So now 
with BitFocus Companion, mix effect providing the variables and condition checks, you can have up to 16 custom buttons on your ATEM Mini Pro doing something else. Now this all rests on the fact that you actually don't use these buttons to do anything. Um, so if you don't use these, or if you do use these, then you're, you're missing out on four buttons, so 16 to 12. And if you happen to use some of these buttons, you know, you miss out on some of those. <clears throat> but I think this is a very interesting way for you to take advantage of those extra buttons on your ATEM switcher to do things that you want to do. So let's take a look back here and we'll switch back to this, make that one go away. So again, I'm going to push, let's say, actually let's bring this guy back on air, as you can see. And I'm going to move him using mix effect. I'm going to move this guy. over there. So now I'm going to push uh, the DSK on screen. There's that one. And I'm going to push the next button. There's that one. And I have a few more images. These are just full screen images, so they're not going to look very good. Okay. And I'm going to go back. And I'm going to turn the DSK off. Okay. And I'm going to do some auto transitions just by pushing these buttons. I push this one, I push the top right, push the top left, push the bottom right, and, and then these guys do the exact same thing. So I got four with the mix. If I push dip, I have four with a dip. And you see what happens if I push 0 0.5, it flashes, it does the auto transition, and then it unhighlights because, again, the mix transition is being set from 15 frames to 31 frames. If I go to the 1.0, so that's the 30 frames, 31 frames. So again, 16 extra custom buttons that you can use with your ATEM switcher. Now, again, you need to get BitFocus Companion version 3.2, free download from bitfocus.io slash companion. Uh, you can use mix effect. I know there are some conditions, there's variables that are in the ATEM module for companion, not the mix effect module, but the ATEM module. But I'm not sure if you can get all the condition checks you need that I showed in this demo. Um, and if you're using mix effect, you're probably watching this video. So you can use, use that. One thing to keep in mind is that you can't push the buttons too quickly. So there is a delay at which the ATEM is like updating its settings. So going from the pattern that's being recognized to the pattern that's not being recognized. So you have to be careful that you don't push the buttons too fast because you could get in a situation where the pattern gets set to the one that BitFocus is checking so that it stays active the entire time. I'll demonstrate that real quick. So I'm gonna push the downstream here on. So you see that, and I'm gonna switch, push this button twice very quickly. So this is the next media still image. So you see now it's still highlighted, okay? That means the media still is set to, or the condition is set to this um, pattern transition. So if I push this, nothing happens because the condition is still true, so nothing, uh, companion can't detect that anything changed. So I have to go, there should be a reset button, which I don't have, but I can push this to go to the previous still, and then I can go push this one, wait, push this another time. So again, you can't just like randomly push these really fast. You do have to do, add a little wait. I haven't been able to figure out a way to get around that. But I think that's uh, not a problem as long as you remember this. Um, and just keep that in mind. <clears throat> All right. So that's the video for today. Uh, how you can reprogram the buttons on your ATEM mini switcher to do different things. Again, on the ATEM mini pro, you can have up to 16 buttons on the ATEM mini extreme. There's a few more buttons, uh, that you can program. So I hope you like this video. Leave a comment down below if you liked it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, do smash that like button and subscribe button down below. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.